everybody. Welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and right over there is Nikki Kinzer. Hello, Pete Wright. Hello, Nikki Kinzer. How are you? How are you feeling this week? Well, it's kind of a sad week. Ugh. It was yesterday was tough. Well, and it was tough watching the news this morning too, because I was telling my husband we were watching the Today Show and they were doing a little tribute to. I assume you're talking about Prince. I certainly am, yeah. <laughs> yes, and uh, I was telling him, I'm like, you know, it's just it. I, I don't know. I mean, obviously he was an amazing singer and entertainer. And, and I think that part of the reasons for me, why it was so sad too. And I'm sure everybody else out there is he was such a part of my childhood, like yeah. growing up, you know, if you grew up in the eighties, it's like you grew up with Prince. I mean, you watched purple rain and you did the little motions of, I would die for you. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I danced around. I mean, you just did that. So yeah, it was just so sad. So Prince, sad. Uh, I I've seen Prince in concert more than any other artist. Really? Uh, I've seen him oh. around the world. I've got, uh, you know, more than 80 Prince albums. Um, I, I spent so much of my youth collecting bootlegs and going from, you know, Record store to record store that, you know, Wax Tracks in Denver was my absolute favorite. Uh, wow. We would spend weekends just going up there and and hounding through the archives of vinyl. I have, I, I actually don't have it anymore, but I had a very rare interview of Prince that was cut on a a, a record, a vinyl album that was actually cut in the shape of Prince. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. And so and I'm I'm very today I can tell you I'm very disappointed I don't have that, you know. It's you one of those like things that. like you think do you think to yourself, gosh, what when am I I don't even have a record player anymore. When am I going to listen to these and uh, I, that was that was a short sighted thing. I should not have have sold that. I, I miss it deeply. I miss all of those old records mm-hmm. deeply. And uh, but um yeah, I've been listening to a lot of Prince the last uh last 24 hours and um it, you know, if, if anything, it just, boy, it puts you in touch with your own morality, you know, mortality, right, right, I, yeah. <laughs> mortality, not your morality. Uh, right. <laughs> you, you know, I mean, at 57, he just, it's makes me feel old all of a sudden. I know. Yeah. I know. It's crazy. So yes, that was, that was a sad, sad part of the week for sure. But. Very sad. He was such a, you know, and this is something that I, I think has just been coming out is just how much of a humanitarian he was and how much he was, you know, how involved he was both financially and, and directly personally involved in so many, um, you know, charities and causes. Uh, but he's a Jehovah's Witness. And so as part of his faith, he was not, uh, he would not talk about his good works. You just mm. did them. And so now that it's now that he is gone, all of his friends and and coworkers and colleagues are coming out of the woodwork saying, You this is what you didn't know about Prince. And mm-hmm. uh, it's pretty mm-hmm. powerful stories are coming out. So anyway. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's it. So yes. Okay. Uh, so, but we are talking not about that. We're talking no. about, uh, it's a tech episode today. And I know, right? I don't have any like notes or outlines or anything. I'm just sitting here <laughs> like a listener and I'm going to uh, write my own notes from what Pete Wright has to say. I don't even, <laughs> I, who even knows, you know, part of what I, I wanted to talk about was, was, um, uh, was checklists and, and how checklists fit into my life right now. And I have a, a, uh, a the, the way we're going to talk about it is in just sort of beginner, intermediate and advanced checklisting. Uh, I got excited about this. You know, we've talked all about the book Essentialism over the last several weeks. We've talked about kind of what we've learned out of that. And there's another book that I am, I'm not all the way through yet, uh, but it is called The Checklist Manifesto by Atul Gawande. And uh, this guy is a surgeon. Now, he has, he has written this book on checklists because if there is ever a field that is in need of really good checklists it's the medical field and right. they have yes. they have taken checklists and and made them just such an art form and not not you know to, when you do it right it's not just a bureaucracy it it really is it's a, it's an art so we're going to talk about that today uh great before we dig in though make sure you head over to take control adhd get to know us and the show a little bit better you can of course as always listen to the show right there on the website subscribe to the mailing list make sure you don't miss a single episode uh or uh, uh, find us in uh, in the apple podcasts directory or and starting this week uh we were a launch partner for google play podcast directory if you're an android user finally google has stepped up and they now have us in the google play store so i I know that is rolling out they said you know at, at the beginning of the week that it's available on the web now but if you are an android user it's rolling out to you over the course 
of this week. So you probably have it now. You can search for the ADHD podcast in uh, on your Google device. There you go. Uh, so here we are. Here we are. Uh, checklisting. Hmm. How do you do with checklists? Are you good with checklists? You feel like you're pretty good with checklists? I mean, we have all these forms that we've released, and the forms are, are great, but they're not quite checklists. Some of those are reminders. But in terms of, like, daily checklists, do you feel like you use checklists? Well, I do, but I got to tell you, it's a work in progress. It is definitely a work in progress because um, I use Evernote. You know, I yep. used to use OmniFocus a lot, but now I have found um, Evernote to be really kind of just the sole place that I go because it's it, for me, I'm, I'm working on this project, right? And it's a big project and there's lots of pieces, lots of moving pieces to it. And so it's easier for me to have everything in Evernote um, than it is OmniFocus. I don't know why, but that's just sort of where I've gone, you know, in the last few months. Yeah, yeah. And I use the little checklist um, feature that they have. So when I actually do need to check stuff off, I do. And I have like a daily and weekly, um, checklist that I have that I'm, that I've been using pretty faithfully and it's actually working pretty well because there's certain things that I have to do every week at the same time. So Mm -hmm. there's a, you know, a routine that I do that I need to do every Monday, every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And so having these things in this, uh, checklist and not ever having them go away. I mean, I check them when I'm do when I do them, but then I uncheck them for the next week. Right. So it's just a constant reminder that this is what needs to be done on Wednesday. Yeah. And, and for me right now, that is really working because, uh, if I don't look at that on a daily basis and it's Wednesday, I will forget what I have to do on Wednesday. Yes. And then, and then on Thursday, I'll be like, Oh man, I forgot about the newsletter. <laughs> 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 and then I'm scrambling, you know, stuff yeah. like that. But, um, so anyway, very long answer to your question. Well, no, it's a, it's a great answer to the question. It's exactly what I'd hoped for actually and it, it, for a number of reasons. First is, you know, it, we we talk about these these checklists and and back to the uh, Gowande book. Uh, he opens this book and you can get this part for free if you download the Kindle uh, introduction. So if you're not interested in the whole thing, you can download just the sample and read the the kind of prologue, which is amazing because it tells the story of an emergency room visit. Uh, a, a man is is taken to the emergency room. It's on how Halloween and um, and and he's got a stab wound in his abdomen uh, and from on the outside it looks like a you know a certain kind of stab wound and they went through the process of just kind of off the top of their heads going through because they're expert medical people and they're moving quickly trying to save his life and they go through all the steps that they have in their head and as they are moving him into this certain level of kind of triage I I suppose uh, he starts like seizing up right it, it it becomes something that they knew and expected to something that is surprising them and they realize that one of the steps that the, the one step that they forgot in their whole triage process was what is the nature of the weapon that stabbed him uh because they thought it was just a normal knife right because it looked about so long as to be kind of a normal sort of knife that they had seen before but in this case it was halloween and he had apparently been stabbed by a, like a civil war era bayonet oh and so it was the same width as a regular knife but much much deeper so what they couldn't see on the outside uh was that he was bleeding out on the inside and causing oh. a very challenging medical situation to get much much worse it oh, is a he, this is a terrible story it is a terrible <laughs> story but it, it really highlights the importance of checklists and that's why this yeah. book is so terrific because it's the things you don't even think about uh about where checklists come and and have the most power in in our lives and my goodness do i want to go to that hospital now because you can bet they're going to have that I don't they're going to the be checklist. very they're thorough. They're going to be very thorough. Yeah, right. So for me, you know, I don't deal with life and death stuff every day, right? I, I, no, uh, you know, no. I deal with repetition. You deal with me. <laughs> I deal with you, right? Now. Uh, you know, we all have this repetition in our lives. And I, I just think that until you stop and think about all the things that repeat around you, you don't really know what you're missing, right? You have your daily checklist, your weekly checklist, things that you are going through every day because you'll miss them if you don't. Oh, it's so true. It's so true. Right. So, And even with the checklist, I still miss them sometimes if I yeah. don't look at 
at the checklist. If you don't look like, at the checklist, I have to right. look at the checklist. Yeah. That is that is step one on the checklist. <laughs> look at the checklist. Have a look uh, at it. It is. It, it's through that lens of of task lists that I think we. I wanted to talk about some of the options for using old and new technology to to build these checklists quickly and efficiently, uh, and just ensure that we're not missing a step in an otherwise invisible process in our lives. Right. So, what is an invisible process? Um, an invisible process is a process you think you know. It's a process of triaging a patient in the emergency room. It's a process of getting up in the morning, right? I look at my morning routine as one of those invisible processes, right? I, I get up. I, I have to go down the hall and poke the tiny dragons that live down the hall from me. I have to shower and dress. I have to make breakfast. I have to make lunches for each child. I have to make the coffee. I have to unload the dishes from the dishwasher. I have to get the kids out the door. I have to clean up the kitchen, right? Those are the things that I like to do. You are busy. Well, you know, morning is morning is what it is. <laughs> right. Uh, or or, or maybe it's a daily health routine. You know, I you may have a, a drink my morning water bottle or take my vitamins, eat breakfast, eat lunch, drink my afternoon water bottle, eat dinner, meditate, right? The things that you do every day or that you want to do every day for your own health and sanity. So those are examples of things that are kind of invisible processes. I absolutely know that I am not alone when I say if I don't have a reminder on my calendar to stop and eat, I will not stop and eat. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that sounds so silly when you say it out loud, but it's the truth. And and mm-hmm. so I think some of these things are just about kind of being honest with yourself and writing down every step of the process. So for the beginner, we're going to go to the old school technology, pen and paper. It is the easiest tool to find. It is it, it, you can write down the stuff that you have to do. Uh, in, in your invisible processes every day. Write it down, put little circles next to each item, and check them off. Now, it's so easy to do, but very difficult to replicate, right? It sounds like it's ridiculous. You just, you know, you just write your new checklist every day. But at the end of the day, you don't want to sit down and handwrite the same checklist over and over again. Well, and you got to keep in mind, too, that people have, we tend to put everything on our checklist or right. on our to-do list, right? So then you've got two pages worth of stuff. So yeah, you definitely don't want to, but that's not what we're talking about, right? What we're talking about is these invisible processes. So right. You're talking about just the routine. Yeah. Not not just the stuff that you want to make sure you don't miss a step. Right. Morning Uh, routines. Yeah. Your morning. So write down all the things, eat breakfast, eat lunch, and put the little circles next to it. So you can check them off and then scan it, take a picture of it and print out uh, seven of them at the beginning of each week, right? And make make that on your weekly checklist. Well, can't uh, you also, like, wouldn't you recommend laminating it? And then you can just use, like, a little pen that just wipes off every time that you check? You could. And I'll tell you, I, and this this is very similar to the way you use Evernote, isn't it? Um, right? It's, essentially, that's what you're doing is unchecking the checklist. You're wiping mm-hmm. off the dry erase, right? Which mm-hmm. is a great idea. My problem is, and this is me, I own that I am deficient in this area. I will forget... It, it, which day I have checked or unchecked an item if I don't actually see that task task go away and then start a new clean one. Oh, I see. Does that okay. make sense? Like uh-huh. I'm not I'm I'm just not clear headed enough to to stop and say, okay, did I actually do this today or is this a check from yesterday that I forgot to uncheck? I see. That's, I see. I totally see what you're saying. So okay. that's why. So I, you need different ones. I need, you need new ones. ones. Yeah, absolutely. Ones. I right. need a new one every day, and and that's that's why I actually don't use paper because it's not very green, and it and so like it it makes me feel guilty about having a paper checklist every day for each of these little routines. I just I'm I'm not wired for it. But that is the easiest way I think to do it and make sure you don't miss a step. Is get your mm-hmm. checklist just the way you need it, and then make copies of it. Okay, got it. So that's beginner. Okay. Uh, there's another beginner uh, level if you want to just take this to the computer. And I, I say text files. Evernote is another great example. It's not quite plain text, but it's just basic click here and type. A text file is any file on your computer that ends in .txt, right? And it just means plain, basic text. This is text that it has been text on a computer since the first computer was created and crafted and powered on. It is very basic and future-proof. Uh, and you can take a text file today and you can be, I'm, I would not, I would hesitate to say 100% sure, but very, very, very highly secure in the odds that that text file is going to be readable in 30 years. Not that your daily checklist today is something that you're going to want to open in 30 years, but just know that a text file is very secure 
uh, and future proof, app proof. It's it's difficult to mess up with a text file. And what's nice about a text file is you get your text your checklist all just the way you want it. Put your date at the top, and at the end of the day, after you've put little X's next to each item that you've finished, you select it, copy and paste it, and paste a new one down below. So you have you know exactly what you did yesterday and what you need to do today. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question on the very basic level. Uh-huh. And people are going to totally laugh at me. When you say text, like you're saying, you know, dot TXT, mm-hmm. like, are you just saying, like, if you're on a Mac, you open up a pages, like a new no. document for pages, no, or you so... open up a Word document? Like, no. I don't get it. Specifically, not those apps. I'm actually really glad you asked that question. So thank you, because I feel kind of stupid. You are not stupid. <laughs> and this is okay. a challenge because Word and pages are not future proof, right? Every time, and, and we've run into this with both of these applications in not too distant history, where the manufacturers, Apple and Microsoft, have made some sort sort of substantive change to the file format of .pages or .doc and and then .docx that changed the way these documents could be read. You and I have run into this where right. you have an older format. version of pages and you send me a file that I then it, it can't open can't because read. yeah, I don't have the older version of pages. They have largely fixed that, but it highlights the the case that plain text is future proof where these application specific formats are not. I can so take, where do you get this? Where do so you get this text, text? So you could open an app on your Mac like Text Edit. It ships for free on your Mac. It comes with the Mac. Uh, it, Pages does not. You have to go download that, right? So if you open Text Edit, uh, you can start a new document and choose to just start typing. Uh, in in pl- and if you want to make sure that it's plain text, you click on the format menu, and there's an option that says plain make plain text. And what you will see there, all formatting yeah. options go away. I just away. opened it. Yeah, on my computer right now. I you see did. it. There it is. So that is plain text. If you save a plain text document, you can send it to anyone. You can send it to Mac or PC or Linux or Unix or Solaris. I mean any. From the smallest dumb phones to the largest network uh, equipment, a plain text file is readable. That is the language of the Internet. So you don't have to worry about losing your stuff. And that's always – we've talked a long time about just that. But if you get the idea of what text is, it's super, super simple. And so you just have to kind of develop your own language. Now, why am I going on and on around text? Because there is a standard – and I'm using standard in kind of air quotes – called task paper. Task paper is a standard for taking plain text and adding functionality to plain text that is interpreted to give you features in in apps that support task paper. So I could create a, a bulleted list in plain text, and a bulleted list in plain text might be dash, um, get up in the morning. Mm-hmm. Okay. And dash on a new line, uh, make coffee. So now I have a two- item task list. If I open this in an app, there's an app actually called Task Paper, but there are a lot of text editing apps that support Task Paper. It would turn that list into something I could like check off, right? And I can now check off, get up in the morning, but the file is still plain text. So I could take it out of that Task Paper app and send it to somebody who wanted to open it on Windows in a different application that supports plain text and they would see it. So you know, we we talked a lot about it, and it makes it sound like it's more complex than it is. The real issue is making a choice to explore the benefits of plain text because it's super basic and super easy. Of course, if you don't really care about formatting issues, open up Word. Do it in Word. Do it in Pages. Do it in whatever, or in Excel. People do this in, in all sorts of different apps. Just find an app that lets you create a basic checklist so that you can copy and paste it from one day to the next. And the job, your job is done. What do you think? What do you think about that? I like it. Okay, so that's beginner. Now let's talk about intermediate. Okay. You mentioned OmniFocus. I I adore OmniFocus, though I don't use it right now. Uh, But what I what OmniFocus allows you to do, and any of these task apps, right? You can choose Outlook. You could choose OmniFocus. You could choose. I'm using the app To Do right now. The number two and Do. Uh, You can create a templates project, and within that templates project, you can create your checklists. 
And then when you're ready to duplicate them, right? Say I have a I have a project, for example, that we'll talk about in more detail in a moment for producing one of these podcasts. Now, producing the podcast has a number of steps. On on our show, it's like 15. You know, I have to go through and create the Google Docs for the show rundown. I have to link it on the on the show schedule. I have to go in and research the the show. I have to go in and, you know, in the case of the text this this checklist episode, I had to research all the different text files and, and apps that I wanted to talk about. And then I have to create the art in Sketch and I have to add the art to the show. And then I have to, you know, write there, the summary. I have to write the summary. I have to build the post on the website. I have to put it in the feed. I, there are so many things I have to do. There's about 15 steps on this show. Uh, on the movie show that I do, there's about 35 um, uh, uh, tasks that go into getting the show out the door um, from beginning to end over the course of about 10 days. And so I need to make sure that I have all of those items documented. And so I can put them all in OmniFocus. And then when I'm ready to create a new show, I just select the top level item of that project, copy it and paste it into my, uh, into my, you know, show folder. And now I have all my tasks, uh, that I can start checking off, but my source in the templates folder is not affected. Does that make sense? Yes. Cause they're two separate things. Right? Exactly. And right, so yeah. every time I want to do a new show, I just grab a copy of the, the batch of tasks from the templates folder and I paste it into my show folder. So that's how I, I work in OmniFocus, uh, when I was using this in OmniFocus. And it's, it's pretty basic and you can do exactly the same thing in any number of, of, you know, task management applications. Create a dummy set of tasks that's vanilla and copy and paste that whole batch of tasks into a new project folder. And then you can, you can start your, uh, start your work on that task. That's kind of intermediate if you use an app to track your tasks. And, and, and that means you're kind of dedicated to an app ecosystem, right? You're dedicated to the way the app works and, um, and, and figuring out how to make these templates. I will say that OmniFocus, uh, Ken Case uh, from the Omni Group, uh, has said just this very week, that they have in beta a solution for um, allowing you to create uh, a, a an entire project based on a, a task. So you can say, I have a task which is uh, episode 250 of the ADHD podcast and hit return and all the tasks I've pre-programmed into that project get put into my OmniFocus uh, based on the date that I need that project to be due. So essentially to automate the creation of these projects uh, for you, and that should be coming to uh, an OmniFocus uh, near you very, very soon because people are testing it right now. So that's a great way. You can tell that there is some momentum around checklists and and making sure that you're being able to repeat checklists. So that takes us to advanced Oh and it boy. also takes us to the iPad. So I, I for, forgive me, uh, Android users, non iPad users, and iPhone users. This is this is absolutely platform specific. I don't know how to do anything like this on Android. I couldn't find anything like this on Android, and I'm not experienced in it. So full disclosure there. This is specific to iOS, and it requires two apps and um, a blog that you need to go read, which will be in the show notes. Uh, first, the apps. The app that I uh, adore is called Workflow. And I think we have talked about Workflow in the past. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. So Workflow is an app that that looks at your system and it sees all the apps that you have installed and, and gives you suggestions of other apps that, that you can also install. And it allows developers to offer these Workflow, um, uh, well, Workflows that plug into Workflow so you can tie apps together that otherwise have not been tied together in the past on your iPad. Because the iPad is is notoriously, like, uh, 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 multitasking uh, antagonistic, right? It's it has been hard over the years to do multiple things at the same time on OmniFoc or on on the iPad and and iOS. You're really doing one thing at a time, and you don't you know unless you're like listening to music in the background. There's very little you can do in the background on on iOS, and so workflow essentially simulates that experience where you can have the system do a lot of things at once and tie things together. So I was uh, listening to one of my very favorite podcasts uh, called Cortex with CGP Grey and Mike Hurley. And CGP Grey is a phenomenally beautiful nerd. I mean, he's just (laughs) brilliant. And I absolutely uh, uh, adore the things that he creates. He's actually a YouTuber, a professional YouTuber, and he creates these YouTube videos that teach you stuff. 
Uh, and so uh, just do a search for CGP Grey. The blog post that he created was just what I've been looking for all my life. <laughs> it allows it, it walks you through how to create a workflow in the workflow app that uh, includes all of the tasks on a particular checklist you want to accomplish. It lets you um, it, it lets you type in a title of the task or of the project that you want to create and the date that that project is due. Now, that's the important part here, because what his little workflow script does is it takes all of my tasks, all 35 of my tasks, and it dates each individual task relative to when the project is due. Oh, interesting. That is a that's a new advanced thing. So it's almost breaking it down for you. It's kind it of breaking is. down the the project of by due dates and what you should be doing. Well, not only due dates, but start dates as well. Start and dates, you know how right. valuable that is. What we don't want to see and don't want to be overwhelmed by are the tasks that we don't have to be working on yet, right? I don't want to see all 35 of my tasks in a given project. I want to see the three tasks that are due right now. And that's what this little workflow lets me do. And it's really funny. I will actually, I will create a video when this goes up and I will put it in the blog post of what happens when I create a new workflow project on my iPad. It'll be a, a screen grab of my iPad so that you can see what workflow is doing. It swaps back and forth between workflow and to do 35 times to build hmm. each task, set a date for it, and and put it in the project. And so it goes back and forth. It whiz, 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 whiz. And suddenly I have a new project with 35 tasks, and they're all exactly where I want them to be, the exact dates that I want them to be. And I know I'm never going to miss a single step because I built the checklist generically uh, myself, and I've, I've massaged it, and it, it works great. So that is advanced stuff, uh, and it's a little bit frustrating uh, because it takes a lot of trial and error. That's why it's in the advanced section. But if you <laughs> right. are a complete hooligan for this stuff and you don't mind spending a little bit of time tweaking it to make it work just the way you want it to work, uh, it is really, really fun uh, and so satisfying to know that, that all of your I's are dotted and T's are crossed. Very time. cool. So that's it. That's what I wanted to talk about today. Wow. It helps me Good absolutely stuff. with my mission to gate and uh, time block uh, by making sure that all of my tasks are in the right places in the right projects at the right time. There you well, go. Well, it sounds like workflow kind of gives you that assistance, you know, that little reminder too of, of the of the deadlines and the timeframes and stuff. It, so it really does. It's and like your little partner. It is my absolutely my little partner. And actually uh -huh. it becomes, uh, again, if you're familiar with IRS, uh, uh, IRS with iOS. It becomes <laughs> I'm sure all screen. of us are familiar with yeah. IRS right, <laughs> right now right, in April. Now. Yes. No. Uh, it becomes either a today <laughs> widget or a home screen widget. So you can, you just like drag down from the top and you can add the, your, your, you know, project workflows right there. So I drag down from the top of my screen and I just tap the, you know, create a new ADHD podcast project. And it says, enter the name of the show. And then what date does it do? And it goes off and builds all my tasks. Um, so it's pretty sweet. It is pretty cool. sweet. So that's it. Well, thank you for sharing your knowledge. Well, thank you for uh, putting up with me as always. And you know, well, I have hard. to, I, <laughs> <laughs> with every joke there is some truth i do have a shout out to a listener in denver uh i it doesn't say if we can use her name so i'm not using your name respectfully but i do want to offer you my deepest thanks i love that people are listening to the plight of a man with with new who is new to glasses and thank you for your uh your suggestions uh for how to actually uh look cool uh and not use a with granny a glasses chain with a necklace and That's and right. uh, i love this last <laughs> she says a cinch is totally unnecessary for everyday wearing i've lost mine but essential for the look when another man makes a snide comment about your granny glasses chain you just disdainfully look at him and say no nah, i like to be able to see when i'm parachuting out of a plane <laughs> that's, that's right awesome. and then drop the mic i love it that's right so thank you so much for Very writing cool. in and uh thank you everybody thank you nikki uh on behalf of nikki kinzer i'm pete wright and we'll catch you next week right here on the adhd podcast <laughs>